Um, good evening, everybody. This is the Goffstown Economic Development Council meeting. It is Wednesday, September 2nd, 2020. Um, for all those who are looking to view this, we can view it on uh, Comcast channel 22 uh, to view this meeting. Um, so we're going to start by uh, stating the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Um, I'm, uh, in accordance with the emergency order number 12, I'm going to read the uh, right to know checklist. So just bear with me as I mumble through this. So. In accordance with the governor's emergency order number 12, pursuant to the executive order 20-04, the Goffstown Economic Development Council uh, Committee will utilize the emergency meeting provisions of RSA 91A to conduct meetings through electronic means while preserving, to the extent feasible, the public's right to notice of such meetings and ability to observe and listen contemporaneously. Public, public, public access meeting by telephone call 603. 766 join 5646 participant code 785645 pound sign or hashtag problems with access residents experiencing problems with access during the meeting are asked to call 603-384-3624 access this meeting by watching live on Goffstown channel Goffstown television channel 22 or on the GTV Facebook page at, at www.facebook.com forward slash Goffstown TV. Facebook will not be men will not be monitored for the public participation during public comment. Residents interested in participating in public comment shall call the public telephone access number. Town of Goffstown Right to Know Law Meeting Checklist. As chair of the Goffstown Economic Development Council and Development Committee, due to COVID-19 outbreak and in accordance with the Governor's New News Emergency Order Number 12, pursuant to Executive Order 2020-04. This board is authorized to meet electronically. Please note that there is no physical location to observe and listen contemporaneously to the meeting, which was authorized pursuant of government, the governor's emergency order. However, in accordance with the emergency order, this is to confirm that we are A, providing public access to the meeting by telephone with additional access possibilities by video or other electronic means. The town is utilizing the WebEx platform for the electronic meeting the public has access to contempor contemporaneously listen and, if necessary, participate in meetings through dialing following number 603-766-JOIN-5646 and using the participation code 785645 followed by the pound sign or hashtag. Providing the public notice, providing public notice of necessary information for accessing the meeting, the town previously gave notice to the public on how to access the meeting using the available telephone number with the posted agenda. Providing a mechanism for the public to alert the public body during the meeting if there are any problems with access. If anybody has problem with the telephone access, please call the meeting. If you are, uh, please call 603-384-3624. Adjourning the meeting if the public is unable to access the meeting. In the event public is unable to access the meeting, we will adjourn the meeting and we'll have it rescheduled at that time. Uh, please note that all votes are, that are taken during the meeting shall be done by roll call vote. Let's start the meeting by taking roll call attendance, which each member states their presence. Also state whether, they, whether there is anyone in the room during this meeting, which is required under right to know law. Did you guys get all that? Yes. All right. All right. Hey, can so, I, can um, I ask a question? Can everybody please mute until they speak? Because there was a lot of scraping going on and all kinds of noise in the background while you were reading that. It was not clear. So, if people can mute, that'd be great. Thank you, Bonnie. All right. Well, we're going to start by taking roll. Um, Joanne Duffy. Chet Bowen. Chad Bowen, select board rep, and I'm the only one in the room. Gail? Gail Abrek, member and recording secretary, and I'm the only one in the room. Jonathan Napoli? Jonathan Napoli, member, and I am the only one in the room. David? Okay. Bonnie? 
Hi, Bonnie Gavin, um, Vice Chair, and I'm the only one in the room. Ellen? All right, we'll go to Mark. Mark Stevens, alternate member, and I am the only one in the room. All right, Greg Rodriguez, Chair, and I am the only one in the room. Okay, so let's read another first one. That's good. All right. So we're going to start by uh, with the approval of or, or correction of the minutes. Um, does anybody have anything to talk about? I, I don't believe we met on eight five, um, right, Joanne? No, we did. We last month we did not have a meeting. Okay. So, Mr. Just, Chair. Sure, Chet. Uh, can I just be briefly recognized for a moment before we start sure. the official agenda? Yeah. Um, I'm going to make the safe assumption that I can speak for the entire board and offering condolences to the Tower family and the Goffstown Fire Department on the sudden and tragic loss of Captain Stephen Tower on August 31st. Um, real devastating blow to the community. Um, mm -hmm. If anyone is interested in attending the wake or the funeral, all of that information is posted online uh, by uh, the Goffstown Fire Department. And it's also on Facebook posted by the Goffstown Fire Department. Thank you, Mr. Chair. If, if I could just add, um, and our sincerest condolences to Garrett Tower, who works at the town hall in the IT department, who was Steve's son, or who is Steve's son. Thank you, uh, Joanne and Chet. That is very sad news and very unfortunate. Sorry to hear that. I know I can speak for this committee when we can all offer our condolences for um, the life lost for Garrett Tower. Um, so do we want to uh, approve and accept the minutes from our July meeting? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of July. Okay. We have a second. Of seconds. Who was that? I'm sorry. That was Ellen. Okay. That was Ellen second. Okay. Gail. You're muted. Yeah. <laughs> yes. All right. Jonathan. Yes. Bonnie. Yeah. Mark. Yes. Chet. Yes. Uh, Joanne. Yes. Ellen seconded. I don't know if I need to ask her, but I also uh, vote yes. So. Um, Motion carries to approve minutes. So now on to the um, meat and potatoes with our business plan. So I uh, was talking with Joanne briefly, um, and we were wondering what business is going to be doing this fall uh, for any social distance events. I know um, the, pump, the, the pumpkin regatta is one of the uh, biggest events for the town. Um, are there any plans moving for this fall uh, that we could? possibly help them with um, for the for businesses, especially down in the village. Mr. Chair, I uh, during the select board uh, meeting on Monday, there was a conversation about the pumpkin robot regatta and how that's going forward. And right now there are certainly a lot of question marks. Uh, I, I know that uh, Main Street is going to be meeting, I believe it's next week to start to have more thorough conversations about that. So we'll certainly keep that, you know, we'll be updated on that. And hopefully at that point we can offer whatever assistance is necessary. And, and I, I believe that we should, that we should. I think, it, you know, if they do decide to hold this year, I think it'd be good for us to all, you know, be present during that time. Um, it just, you know, we can, I don't know how we could make it possible while social distancing, but maybe have a table or, um, you know, a tent area saying this is the economic development council and you know this is what we're trying to do. And you're even to show our mission and goals of, of what we're trying to do to improve uh you know the downtown in Penardville for Goffstown. Um I don't know if that's go ahead Joanne. Oh, I was just gonna say I did speak with Ellen and I believe okay. the Main Street office is Main Street board is having a meeting this Thursday evening to okay. um, talk about that issue. Can you hear okay. Do we know? Yes, yes, Ellen. Okay. 
<laughs> I don't know which one of these buttons puts me on. Um, yes, the Main Street Board is meeting tomorrow evening. Um, we've been tossing around, uh, certainly not doing the two day event, big thing, and not doing the big regatta because it brings in literally thousands of people. We didn't see how social distancing in any way could happen. We have been discussing doing a very small pumpkin something uh, for a couple hours uh, on a Saturday. I don't know if we're gonna go forward with that, but I, I will have a decision tomorrow night and we'll let Joanne and Derek and anybody else in town hall need to know. We are aware that we need to get all kinds of permits and all you know, that kind of stuff. Right mm -hmm. now, um, we, I know we're not doing the two day event. Okay, so it's just gonna be one day event on a Saturday for a few if hours. anything, if anything. Right. Okay, if anything. Okay. Well, I was just looking forward to seeing, uh, you know, Selectman Bowen riding a pumpkin. Uh, <laughs> I'll say next pumpkin. year. Next year. <laughs> next year. Okay, like good. <laughs> next year for sure. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, anything. You know, I know that's the biggest event, but is there anything else that's looking to be planned for this fall? Um, from Main Street, uh, our next event is uh, look, and we're not holding a big event like we used to. Friday night under the lights, Main Street is sponsoring lighting up the common. We are, have a tree and we're putting it up and we're going to have it lit like last year, okay. uh, but we're not going to do an event. I'm, I'm looking at possibly having GTV come down and uh, broadcast it live mm -hmm. so the community can see it. And then have it on tape on GTV. Um, we're not looking at doing a big event at all. And then we're, do, we're sp supporting um, Shop Small Saturday. That, okay. There again, that's not a big event. Mm -hmm. So um, that's where we're at right now. The COVID's kind of done the same thing to Main Street as it's done to everybody else. Right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I know everybody's looking forward to the regatta and these events. And right. we don't feel we can be doing much of anything. Mm -hmm. I'll have a thorough decision tomorrow night, one way or another. Sure. Yeah, maybe we can uh, join. We can throw that on the agenda for um, our October meeting. Uh, either way, I mean, it's coming up, uh, so I think it'd be good yeah. for us to, to, you know, even put that in email beforehand. We can coordinate as a group on what we okay. should be doing. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, is there any, anything else anyone want to add uh, before we move on to the next item? Okay. Um, I guess that kind of ties into the business plan for the fall season. So uh, part of my thinking is even looking at, you know, after cross-referencing our, our EDC goals, I think those <laughs> kind of at this time, they're a little thrown out the window just because of, of what we're going through right now and what those businesses uh, are going through. So, um, you know, I think as we look to the fall and even to the winter and spring, how our business is going to be affected because we're not going to be, they're not going to be seating outside. Who wants to eat outside in, in 30 degree weather? You know, how is this going to affect indoor dining and, and all those, uh, and, you know, all those little shops downtown They're Yes, they're, they're great and they're bustling right now, but um, how are the phases going to progress, especially during cold and flu season? Um, so it, I'm just, it's just an idea, to, it's just a thought to throw out there. Um, and I don't know if we can fix it. I don't think we can fix it, but it's just maybe we can, I know we spoke in July about, you know, helping them with guidelines of uh, especially individual business owners. And I, I'd still like to do that um, and, and pound some pavement. Uh, so maybe we can right. help them. Yep. Yeah. Um, back in July, there was, uh, I think I was supposed to get a call to send, give out flyers, some type right? of so, application form to yeah. and the only single business owner that had was their own employee that I could think of was Howden's at the time. Mm -hmm. um, I never got that call. So I'm wondering if those forms ever got out to the businesses. I can answer that, Alan. So when we Thank talked, you. I had already sent out the flyers to the businesses okay. that I had contacts with. And the problem was that the, the last funding was strictly for um, sole proprietor businesses or um, 
I think that was it. There, there was no, uh, it wasn't for the businesses like along Main Street, for instance. So there was no way for us to tell going through all of the lists that we have where these businesses were located. Most of them are just located out of their homes. And so we, we put it out on social media. We put it out on the town's Facebook page. Um, but there really wasn't any way to narrow it down. So I did spread the word through Facebook, through social media, as well as the emails that I had. Um, but it seemed to be like a waste of time for someone to go door knocking at that point. Most people, if you go up to their homes, they're not answering their doors. Um, so I think the resources could certainly be put to better use. Um, I have reached out to the business list with your questions, Greg, that you gave me the other day yeah. as, you know, the three questions like now, winter, and how can we help yeah. um, to see if anyone had any feedback. I told them we were having a meeting this evening, hoping that they would chime in. We said we'd love, I said we'd love to hear from you. Right. Um, you know, it would be helpful. However, I'm sorry to report that I haven't heard from anyone. Mm -hmm. I have been having separate conversations with the local businesses um and you know that that's all i can help with right now is like a one-on-one -on -one sort of thing um but i don't know if if we could even suggest maybe calling a meeting of some of the local businesses i i don't think we'll get a response at this point i think they're putting all of their energy and efforts into their business and, you know, I don't think they have time to come to a meeting. Right. So unless they reach out to us and say they need help, um, or we happen to just take a walk and go start kind of going into some of them. I, I did hear that the, uh, and I don't know if there's any truth to this, um, that the mall where the, the uh, Fun City is in Pinardville, um, apparently Fun City closed. I thought they were reopening, but now I've heard from someone that they didn't think that they were going to. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, I can never say this, Mikado restaurant, the Japanese restaurant, they are still closed. Okay. Um, so I don't know where they stand right now. The Shaking thought... Crab did open up again yeah i did see that fun city was, was looking to do a like a daycare thing like a like a remote learning uh -oh. okay. station I, I don't know if that's still happening but i i we feel like it was on facebook or something my wife told me about it that they were okay. going to do like a like a not a daycare it was kind of like a, a an after school but midday program type of thing yeah. so okay. um i i have a question joanne i have a question do we have a list of every single business in Gothtown? No, we have several lists. Some are older than others. I did also receive a list from Stephen um, Nino from the UNH Cooperative. And there are all these businesses on there that we really don't know whether they still exist. So I put together, I've, I've expanded my email list quite a bit. And I was hoping to get some assistance I asked um, Derek if we had anyone in town hall that might have some free time. And I don't know that that's possible. So I was hoping to get some assistance from someone or a few people who could call a few businesses a, get, a day to get their email address. I do have lots of phone numbers, but not their email addresses. Right, so that's what I was going to recommend is, is that if we can get a list together of all the businesses in town, even the little onesie twosies, whatever they are, and then we can start calling them and get a complete compiled list, that would be so helpful, okay. not just for, for you, but it would be also helpful for the town. I would be happy to make some of those calls. Um, so if I can get a list, I would be happy to make some of those calls okay. for you. Um, Thank so you. I, I think we really need to compile that list and get it going. Okay. Can I ask you a question? Um, <clears throat> this might be just me not knowing some of the other committees that are out there, but do our local businesses have a chance to directly connect with state um, 
you know, Department of Health and Human Services to ask some of the questions about how they can open up their business? Is there is there a direct um, forum for them to connect with, you know, Dr. Chan and, and their group? Yes, um, there is a website that they can go to with many questions, and sometimes there are webinars held. Um, and again, whenever I see that information, I pass it along. Um, some of the businesses obviously are more savvy than others, uh, especially with this additional funding that's been coming through. Uh, some just rely on their accountants to take care of things or their attorney. Um, and then others don't really know as much. So um, they ne needed a little bit more handholding, um, which is fine. Um, I feel that that's what, that's what we're there for. So uh, it really, you know, even though they're all small businesses, some have been around longer and know the ropes and, and some are, are newer. And yeah, I was just help. thinking more too along the lines of like Greg's point with reopening, you know, with reopening in the fall yes. again into the winter, you know, are there strategies that, that folks can talk to in real time and a, a forum for businesses to connect and be able to share some of their ideas and, you know, and ask questions of some of the, you know, the public health officials of how do we do this safely? Yes. Are, are some of those forms that exist, yeah. We, we have um, not reg, we were having regular weekly meetings with the commissioner of economic development for the state every Monday. And we haven't had, a, we haven't had one in a few weeks, but we're scheduled to have one soon. And all of the links are provided to us as far as what you just mentioned, getting assistance. And I've been, again, sharing all of that. But if you only have, I don't know how many emails I have, just say 100, and there's 300, 400, 500 businesses, there's only a small portion that we're sharing the info with. We even got um, funding came down through the state recently for the farming industry and the agricultural. And I did forward those to all of the farms in town. Some knew about it and some didn't, but they were, you know, they were all provided with an information from our office. Is there anything in the governor's office that might, we might be able to call and, and find out if there is a certain place where these businesses can go? So, well, do you remember Jimmy Hicks? Yeah. He works for the state office. He, every single day, <laughs> well, not as much lately, but almost every single day. He sends us information, the, the latest information that he receives. And if it's something that's not repetitive, I'm sharing that with the business owners. So if there's anything new that comes out, I think we're waiting right now to see if Congress is going to approve any additional funding, which we haven't heard the final word on that yet. Mm -hmm. um, and that would be a big help because I think these business owners, you're going to see more and more needing assistance because the other funding has dried up and the unemployment has dried up. And would the, the executive, the federal executive order by the president, did, did that help any small businesses or uh, with that, or is that mostly just for individuals who are unemployed? I believe that was just for the unemployed. There was going to, okay. it was going to go from six hundred to 400 additional per week. Okay. And I don't know if the part about paying for that through the, the um, local government and right. social security is even part of it. Okay, because I know it was 25% was up to the states to pay, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm not yeah. sure if that's been approved. Okay, I know, and, and part of this too is like, I, people are so focused on reopening schools. I work for a school district, so it's like that's a huge distraction right now by, by but once you know that calms down and schools are finally in session in some shape or form i think the focus is going to be back on not school shopping but right pat, you know uh, patronage within their town exactly. so which will which will also have a great impact on yeah. businesses because school shopping is a huge right. deal right. lots of money spent just for a pair of sneakers is over a hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. <laughs> okay. All right. Winter season. Um, I think this is all into the same. I think we kind of answered that question in the uh, 
well, I'm not really answered the question, but talked about it, uh, especially for rolling back faces and what resources we can give them, um, and what the easy what we can do to help. I think, you know, if we can get that information, I think it'd be good for us. You know, to calling is great, and I think, but I think just even stopping by and if there's like a little cafe and get a cup of coffee and just talk to the business owners, I have no problem. I would, I kind of want to do it. it. Actually, I really want to do it. I think it's a it's a good thing for us to do um, to say who we are and. Mm -hmm. um get her get more out there I mean, they can see us on channel 22 um shameless plug for gtv but uh <laughs> they can they can see us here but you know i think us being in you know in the flesh and and saying you know showing that we are here to help i think would be great for us to do most of the businesses are continue to be open uh like ace hardware uh the yep. hardware store in um Bernardville. they have never closed right. um the some are re some are requiring masks, which is fine, and some of the like Apotheca just recently opened their doors to the public. But you can't sit inside; you can buy your goods and sit outside, or you could. That's for the flower portion. You can buy whatever's in the flower store. If you want something to drink, you go to the window and you sit outside. So they've all made various accommodations to make it work. Um, I, I, like you say, I think the hardest hit will be the restaurants when it gets colder and they do have to figure out what they're going to do. When I was out West, all the, there was, you know, outdoor seating was a big thing, even when it got cooler at night and they all had those giant, um, propane heaters. heaters yeah. I haven't seen any here yet, hoping that they will use those because that will give them at least a little bit more time. Um, before it dips into the colder weather. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm really worried about the winter time with, yeah. with these businesses. Like the, that's, that's going to be the, I think the hardest part. When we look at Mikado, like you said, shut down, they haven't, and that's during the summer. Right. So can we just, we can just imagine what the, what the late fall and winter is going to, and early spring is going to look like for them. So. Yeah. Not good. No. All right. Um, hey, Greg? Large, on, a, on a positive note, the restaurants in Pernardville area have all been pretty busy, even for yep. our seating. Um, and, you know, everybody's being careful about it, patrons and business owners. Um, so that's a promising sign. And I'm I glad agree. Um, some of them made it through, and, and hopefully we can. But I, you're right, winter is, you know, we haven't even. Didn't have to go through a winter, really, because uh, it, no. it's around St. Patrick's Day. So to think about that, um, yeah, it's, it's definitely a big concern. I, I attended a webinar uh, this past week about the restaurants and how they're struggling, not just in, in Golfstown, but all over the state. And there were a few restaurant owners there, and they were saying how the public doesn't understand all that they have to go through just to make this portion work, like they can't have salt and pepper shakers on the cat on the tables any longer everything has to be scrubbed down i mean there's lots and lots that go into this um behind the scenes that you, you don't even know that it's happening right. and they are very worried um there doesn't seem to be that any of them have a solid plan on what to do once the the winter um comes it's yeah we they're just probably just going to be a takeout only type of place and yeah and i think that's when we have to encourage our um you know our, our fellow gostonians to do more takeout for the for the local restaurants yeah Craig? yeah yeah uh, is there anything we can do edc can do to support the shop small saturday across the uh, whole town to encourage people to go out and and all our stores um i think social media i think a tv presence i don't know about commercials but maybe if there's like a scrolling banner uh we can do um we have town halls we have the town hall that can be posted stuff there i think there are things that we can do that what doesn't cost this committee a lot of money i i, I think you know, us uh, promoting it through our means that we have or the tools that we have would be a good strategy craig if there's any businesses along let's say pernardville the village that that route on mass road um yeah. 
any that have the signs that have the changing letters, perhaps they might even want to advertise it. That's a good idea. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think I'd, we can I'd certainly have to take get a ride down there to see, but yep. We might even be able to get some help from Rotary and maybe even the Lions Club and mm -hmm. see if and we can get everybody to Saturday? join in. When small business Saturday? It's not until the Saturday of Thanksgiving after right after Thanksgiving. Okay. So we, okay. have some time. So we have time. Okay, good. Is That's there typically a, a social media, um, I don't know, like presence. advertisement that whoever is organizing that develops that we could help, you know, share and distribute mm -hmm. just on our own social media accounts and, and tagging various folks? Is there something that they come up with typically each year? No, the only thing we did in the past was um, small business. They called it small business Saturday, and it was mm -hmm. basically um started out by the main street program and there's um american express has like templates that you can use for various you know whether it be on electronic means or um you know paper flyers or whatever that uh that's basically what we did a few years ago and then last year at christmas time or no it started at the the pumpkin fest they had um, they called it a uh, passport for savings, um, but that was difficult. They were selling it for ten dollars, and then the businesses that participated gave a discount for their goods. I think we need to just get people in the doors of the businesses and not try and sell anything. Yeah, because we're going to be careful. Especially, I'm talking. I don't. I'm not talking about Main Street, but I'm talking about this group because we can't really get into the business of selling gift cards and things like that. Right. Okay. Uh, I think, Chet, I think you're next on the uh, select board updates. So that's just an ongoing item that's been um, continued on the agenda so that we don't forget about it. If you want me to remove it from the next meeting, I can do that. No, that's fine. I don't know if Chet has anything else he wants to, if he wants to talk no, about. I, I think it's important to keep it on the agenda to remind ourselves. Okay. Um, but I do, but I do want to say that I think Greg was on point with our focus being on how can we help the businesses in the here and now. I also remember uh, many times the the debate on whether or not we focus on certain businesses and um, when business is normal and capitalism is working as it should i have zero issues with our original plan of we're going to focus on these businesses and we're going to be transparent about when we're going to focus on these businesses but right now whichever businesses we focus on first um you know could potentially have an advantage over others and that's not the point of this this committee we're here to help all mm -hmm. um the one the one thing i will say that i think we might be able to do um that we were talking about earlier. I just wanted to wait until I was you know, on the agenda to say it. We're a tight knit community of a lot of really good people and nobody, even even businesses that compete with each other, no one really wants to see another business go out of, you know, lose lose their, their livelihoods. And so I know that you mentioned takeout restaurants are probably the, the number one hotspot for our for businesses in Goffstown, I would say. Um, and, and so one thing I think we might be able to do is some of the businesses when this first hit did a pretty good job of of getting out there and sustaining, you know, at a level that could could allow them to continue. I wonder, uh, I don't want to mention any businesses in a, in a public meeting by name, but I will say that I do wonder if we could approach some of them and ask about some best practices and if they would allow us to share that. Um, we're not looking for a lot of sort of insider knowledge about their day to day. We're looking specifically for what has worked for you during this crisis, especially when it's getting cold out? And I think we all know, we could probably think off the top of our heads of a couple of businesses that we could approach. Um, and then if we could share that as an economic development council and really hit the pavement, as Greg said, one way or another, or do a mailer um, that says, these are some best practices that have worked for these other businesses. Um, I think that might be something, it's small, but something we could actually do that's tangible that could be helpful. And that, that's my two cents on that, but um, I just, I don't think that right now is the best time for the, you know, unfortunately the sector. I think we keep it on the agenda, but um, yeah. 
hopefully we'll get back to that at some point in the future. I think too, just going up what Chet said, we want all businesses to, to do well because if we have businesses close down, businesses drive more businesses and that drives more business. <laughs> it's, I don't know, it's like if you have a place that go, that closes down and you're, you're shopping in a little shop, well, you may want to get a coffee or a, uh, some baked good next door because you're there. You know, we don't want that to go away, you know, and this is a time that, we, we're going to see where we're where, where the, we're really strong or really fragile as a community so to, to make this happen. Greg, so. Greg, I have a question. Um, would it be helpful if we go out to some of the, the there's a several Gosstown Facebook pages, not just the town page. Would it be helpful to go out and say, do you know of a small business? You know, have them contact Joanne, have them contact one of us you know, um, so that we can get their information, whether it's the little drywall guy or whether, you know, if we put it out on some of the Facebook pages, we might be able to gather some of that information and it probably would be pretty helpful to us. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah. I, I, I think, it'd be, I think we have a lot of ideas coming right now. And I, I, I don't know how we feel about forming subcommittees just to, tackle some things to mm -hmm. because um you know it's great that we meet and talk about these things but i think just some action to do this moving forward you know you through some committees and then coming back would be best for us to to, to do this so I mean, we can talk about what subcommittees we want um you know moving forward but i think just doing that and, and then formulating a plan and then reporting back to the group would be would be best because I, I think we got we got a lot of we got a lot of momentum going right now, but it, it usually halts at, <laughs> at the end of the meeting, and then we talk about it for the next month. So um, yeah, that was going to be my question. <clears throat> that was yeah. going to be my question too, Greg. Of you know, of what are we actually going to put together? And I think you know, having like Bonnie had said, like having a list of all of the businesses, and if we can kind of divvy up and divide and conquer, if we if yeah. we come up with a set list of questions. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so I think you know, really figuring out what are their you know, what are their apprehensive points coming up into the fall? And yep. then like Chet said, you know, what what have you been doing? What have your best, pract best practices? And if we can aggregate that, all of that information back together, I think that'll really give us an idea yep. of what are our high value options that we should target as a group. Yeah, I agree. I yep. can start that by sending it out to the list that I currently have just to get a jump start. You know, in the meantime, we'll update the list. But yeah, you know, I think it's a good idea to send out the list, and then and then even just going out. You know, if we team up and go out and actually visit the yeah. businesses, so they, you know, some of them hopefully would have had the list and have seen it, and you know, oh yeah, you know, I, you know, I saw that come through. I've been thinking about it. You know, here's here's this, and then for us to be able to really make the the personal connections there too. You know, being there. Um, I, I think we'll take it the extra mile and I, I'm definitely willing to, to jump yeah. into this. And I think it'd be kind of an exciting project for us. I, I think also the other thing too, is I think it would be um, good for us to receive Joanne, what you send out so that mm -hmm. we're aware of that. If we go into a business and I go into like um, the gas station or I go someplace and I'll say, Oh, I, you know, I'm from the economic development. Did you, did you receive, did your own, did the owner receive mm -hmm. this information? And if not, I'd be happy to send it. Can you give me your the email address? I mean, that way we can start building that list. I mean, we really need to start doing that so we know who we've got there in the community because there's so many little businesses out there. Yes, there are. I agree. I have one last thing I'd, I want to add to that. It's more for Joanne and I, but I just I want to say it before I forget. Um, there has been historically um, some, we've had some trouble as a council getting out there on social media because of some of the policies that exist. And in some cases, those policies exist for very good reason. But this was pre-COVID. So one of the, you know, sending things out to the businesses that currently exist is a wonderful thing. I, I also wonder, Joanne, and, and you and I can talk later about this, but I'm saying it out loud here, about really discussing Economic Development Council Facebook page where we can put on, do you have a small business in Goffstown? There's, there's a number of, of, of um, Facebook pages dedicated to Goffstown. At this point, I think it is really critical that we have that ability to reach out to those small online communities and get some feedback. Um, do you have a business? What is your contact information? And you get some really 
we, we can get some data points that we desperately need if we are able to do that. So um, I'll tell the committee here that I will work with Joanne and Derek on, on revising some of that, it, you know, as with anything that involves um, any sort of, you know, small government, it takes a little bit of time, but I think now is the time to start that conversation. So I'm just throwing that out there now. Thank you. Excellent. This is exciting. All right. So, Chet, so are you saying for us not to go out to a Facebook page just yet is what you're saying? Do I hear you correctly? No, I can no, do that. As, as individual members of the Economic Development Council, go out there and get it done. Do as much as you can. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. Right. Thank, thank you for asking that clarifying question. Yeah. I am okay. saying that I, I think that we can we can add some um, um, what, what I'm trying to look, I'm trying to operationalize it so that Joanne can do something on her own where she can get the information directly back to her um, and implement it into our into a larger database. Right now, we're not able, to, I'm not saying we can't do it, but right now it's, it's a little bit more difficult. I'm going to work with Joanne to streamline that process. But you as individual community members and on the council, go for it. Got it. Thank yeah. you. Got it. I'll be on there tonight. <laughs> I found that um, it seems it's a little bit easier to go to their Facebook page to look up their phone number and if they have their email versus their website, because the website is not always up to date. Sometimes I do look at both, but I find that the Facebook is a little bit more updated on a, on a regular basis. And then some don't have a Facebook, you just have to use the website. All right. Um, let's see. So CGI, I saw this email come through earlier. Do you want to just touch on that, Joanne? Yes. Yeah. So Derek received information from this company, CGI, and he was wondering if the EDC would like to promote it. And basically, the company would sign a three-year contract with the town to complete the following, I'm reading from the email. Produce videos promoting the town for free, which can be used on the website and Facebook page, which would consist of a welcome video, quality of life, business and industry, community organizations, et cetera. And there was a sample video in the email that was sent. The video production company then reaches out once the contract is signed with the town they reach out to the local businesses and they see if they're interested in either becoming a sponsor, which would then include a logo of their business on all of the information that is normally sent out and on the videos that they, that they uh, put together. The price range is 500 for the business owners is 500 to 5,000. They, the sample videos that they sent us, one was from Wyoming, Indiana, Minnesota, one is from Littleton, New Hampshire, and the other is from Dayton, Ohio. And I, and I looked at it and it, it you know, it's pretty good. It, it goes around and shows the town and shows what's happening. There's different uh, categories. Like I said, there are so many um, videos that they do. One would consist of the subjects that I just uh, read off. There's no cost to the town other than signing off on the contract. There is that commitment. And then it would be up to the company to make the arrangements. Um, but the town would send out a letter to the business owners. Basically, basically it would say the town has excited to announce the new partnership with CGI Communications creating a series of professional produced videos to highlight everything the town has to offer to residents, visitors, business owners. With an easily viewable interface on the official Goffstown page, the video tour, and it goes on, the program presents unique opportunities for the business community in today's environment. We are dedicated to highlighting the advantages, blah, blah, blah. And then they try to sell them space or whatever. Um, so Derek wanted to know if he should bother to pursue something like this. 
Um, he first wanted to check with the EDC to see if he thinks it would be a good thing or not. I think this is similar to what um, Jeremy Jones was was going to do with Adam McCune, and then everybody became busy. Um, I'm just somewhat worried about the timing of it and whether the businesses would have any additional funding to do this at this point in time. Joanne, I was a little confused too as to the, the um, video program, the contract that they sent. During the terms of the agreement, CGI shall produce a tour of four video chapters with subject matter include but not limited to welcome and three additional videos of your choice. So is that for the town or is that included for the business? No, that's strictly for the town. And then those videos would be included on our website. And if the businesses decided to participate, for however, I don't know what the price range is, but um, they could have, like, if you looked at one of the videos, you would see it at the end and in the beginning, there are the logos from certain yes. businesses. That's one of the things they could buy into. Not sure what the others would be, um, but it would be some sort of advertising for them. And then they would then possibly have a video to put on their website that they sponsored. Then that's probably the higher cost. And I'm not sure if businesses would be willing to do this right now. Maybe some would if they're if they're doing very well and they're busy. I, I don't know. But Derek is looking for some advice. Yeah, my, my concern for what for this was it doesn't really tell us what they get, what our businesses get. So I, I was really a little concerned. So they get their logo on, on the video that comes to the town, but then they also can pay to have another video done for their business. And I, it's just, it's I didn't think it was really clear when I read through it. Um, I, some businesses may want to do this because it might generate some more business for them right now. Um, but I'm not sure. I mean, I, I, I don't know what anybody else thinks, but I was, I read through it all and it just wasn't I, really clear. Yeah. So I, I would say it sounds like, it sounds like what they're asking the town for is an endorsement, which gives them a hunting license to go to all of our businesses and offer their services. But the businesses, I, they've probably found over time that when the town itself says, hey, this company is legit, they probably have a much easier time getting a business to buy in. So I certainly will not give it like an up or down right now that we should endorse it. But I would love to see Joanne um, and, and everyone else, please chime in. But if you can find out from your, the person that does the a job similar to yours in Littleton, who've, who've already decided to have a video from them, yeah. what, what their experience is, my original you know, less cynical, less critical side goes, there's not a whole lot to lose here. They're going to, we're going to, we're going to send out a letter and the businesses are going to have the option and they don't have to do it. So I, I don't, I don't, I don't see a huge downside, but I would love to know from Littleton what their experience was. And you always wonder when a business offers something to a town for free, you know, what's that all about and what's the business model behind it? So th those are my thoughts. And the downside I see is just, you know, are we going to hit every business? So one business gets it and another person doesn't in the town because our list isn't complete. That's the only downside really I can see. But I agree with you. I'd like to see what Littleton has done. The email. Um, go ahead. <laughs> Ellen. Oh, thank you. Um, is this something that we could speak with GTV about? It's if uh, having a video on the town's um, Facebook or website is something that GTV could produce for us. Uh, not have, and, and same with the businesses. Um, they could have a spot on the town site and advertise themselves that way. We were going to do that, Ellen, about maybe a year and a half or two ago, um, mm -hmm. but it just never got off the ground because Adam is, is very busy and he was shorthanded for quite a while. Um, so it, it never just could approach them again, maybe. Um, maybe we could. I, yeah. I can't speak for Adam. I don't know yeah. what his workload is at the moment, but we could. If, if I can just uh, interject the the email that I received um, where it says price range five hundred to five thousand. 
it's as simple as link to a to a to business website. In other words, link the video to their business website, or as complex as a 90 second video produced by the company. So I would guess that that's the, at the five thousand dollar range, 90 second video. But I will definitely contact uh, Littleton and talk to them up there and find out how it's going and whether it's worth it. And maybe I, instead of waiting another month, I can just send out an email to everyone. And we can have a discussion back and forth, but if you email direct to me, then I could email back. Like we just can't have like a discussion of everyone because that would be in violation of the right to know. Could, could you check with Adam as well to see if this is something oh, sure, that TV sure. could be doing? Thank you. I will do that. So before yeah, check, certainly check with Adam, but this this was something I recall that they had wanted to do before, and I think that the the changes in the the landscape, if you will, it really kind of put the kibosh on that. Um, is that is that accurate, Joanne? Yes, if you remember uh, Jeremy Jones, who was um, Charlie had talked to him several times. Jeremy owns or owned six oh three drones. And they were going to have him work with Adam and then um, it just never materialized. Charlie was ending his uh, term at that point and the whole thing just never came to be and everybody just was busy and kind of went their other ways. We have had um, a request from Jeremy to join one of our boards and he put down several different boards in his first pick was the EDC. So I encourage Catherine to steer him that way. I think he would be a great asset to this board or council. Keep calling you at a board. <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyway, I will double check on that and I will email you the results so we don't wait another month. Um, the other two things real quick is uh, we, I also received information on another grant called Main Street America, a heartbeat of Main Street grant, which is a national grant program. The deadline for applying was April 23rd. It was for those businesses that would have been considered to be on the main drag of the town, which also would include the Bernardville Mass Road businesses. I did send this out to many of the businesses within that section of town and um, spoke with a few of them directly as far as explaining about how the grant would work. Um, there were several uh, restrictions with this grant, but it sounded like a few of the uh, bit local businesses would, would really fit in. It was women-oriented owned businesses and um, it had the historic aspect of it. Um, so there were a few properties that would definitely meet the criteria. So hopefully at least one of our Goffstown businesses um, would get this grant. The grant, the, uh, the uh, amount of the grant would be $5,000 to $15,000. So that's another one. And the last item I had was sent out an email a few times. The select board is trying to put together the village of Piscataquag River pedestrian bridge ad hoc committee. It's a mouthful. Um, you probably know more about this than I do, Chet, but they are looking for a member from the EDC. You're muted. You're muted. Yeah. You're muted. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, willing, I'm willing to do it, but I'm, I, did I already put my name in for Main Street. Mm. I know you want one person representing two different things. I don't think the rules of the committee would allow that, um, which I, I appreciate that though. I would do it of, of course as well, but I cannot being a select board member. Um, I think this is one of the most important projects that this town is facing uh, period as it relates to economic development. So if someone can can volunteer from here to be on that, that would be, um, that would be amazing. Joanne, do you recall what time, the, did they have a plan on what time they're, they're going to meet and what day? Yeah, what is the time commitment to? So this just says that the volunteer application is due by 920. I mean, I'm sorry, 99. 
and the selectmen will be reviewing it on 914 and that the let's see it doesn't say anything about it's it's the committee would be in existence for one year i don't think that means it would take that long but they would be in existence and they would present their report by August of 2021. Normally I've been on a lot of committees in the past for towns and normally they wait till the group gets together and then they decide the it's day, us. the time, that kind of thing, and they elect a chair. So this doesn't have any um, definite uh, rules to follow as far as that goes. So I would assume they would probably do the same thing Okay. Oh, well, I'll volunteer for that. If that's, I, I'll, I'll be happy to volunteer. Nice okay. go, Chad. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Bonnie. I will let them know. Thank you. <laughs> I knew you were waiting for that. You, they, they may want to <laughs> hear from you directly, Bonnie, because there is a volunteer application. Do you want me to resend this to you so it has the link to the application? Yes, please. Okay, yes, please. sure. I'll fill it out tomorrow. Okay. Joanne, while we're, we're talking about the bridge, is there any developments at Factory Street with the renovation there or still um, on hold? So uh, they recently came into the planning board, their, their one year extension. So when someone receives planning board approval, it's typically condi condition, con I can't even talk, conditional approval, which is what they had. And that conditional approval is good for one year. And if they haven't met those conditions, they ask for an extension, which they did again, and it was approved just about a month ago, or maybe it was July. So um, we have heard from a party uh, with several people involved. They've been doing the um, kind of a due diligence study. They've met with staff. They've had lots of questions. We've directed them to different parties within the state as far as the dam goes. And we're just kind of waiting for them to do their background checks, but it does seem to be that they're very interested. And the apartment building on Bog Road just went through something similar. There's an interested party in purchasing um, and they are, they're in the process of um, getting their funding and that will that has a year's extension as well. So. It's just been tough for certain types of projects, especially large residential multifamily to obtain funding. Even Joanne, before the COVID. Joanne, has the school district been informed of the Bog Road one? Yes, Patty always sends out um, in a uh, request. I believe it usually goes to Scott whenever we have okay. uh, residential come in for the planning board yeah. review. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Joanne, was that included in your director uh, update right there? Yes. Okay. Ellen, did you want to talk about Parentville beautification? Um, there really is nothing followed up with that one. I okay. suggest to the people that had an interest, they get a small group together of residents and businesses and my knowledge, I haven't heard anything back about that. The other topic I had raised was road work in the Penardville area of Goffstown. Um, I did follow up on that with uh, DPW, and there's a road plan for next year that seems to have a lot of um, many streets in Penardville that really need work. Um, I don't know what will become of that. Um, but I know we as EDC was concerned, certainly roads in any area of our town, good roads would help our businesses. Um, and I know apparently there's, there's the road plan does include Connerville um, residential roads that are in pretty bad shape right now. So hopefully, hopefully something will be able to be done over there. Yeah, I, and I can quickly follow up very quickly the road plan, uh, as we know, with the with the pandemic and everything, you know, what what is what's still on 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 course and what is not the road plan is still on course. Everything seems to be going fine there. 
because I, I saw Ellen, I saw the response from from Adam as well that that spoke mm -hmm. to those roads, and um, that plan still seems to be intact, which is really good news. Good. Okay, so it's a matter of budgeting, and keeping movie, keeping it moving forward. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Well, does anybody else want to talk about anything before we uh, move towards adjourning? No. Okay. Uh, does anybody want motion a motion? to adjourn. All right. Do I have a second of that motion? Ellen. All right. So. I'll second. Okay. Ellen seconds. Uh, Gail. Hi. <laughs> Jonathan. <laughs> Chet. Yep. Bonnie already went. Ellen motion. Joanne. Yes. All right. Motion. Uh, Mark. Yes. Mark. All right. Motion carries. Have a great evening, everybody.